so we looked at the Ten Commandments and uh, it didn't look good for us. The law shows you your sin. It, it, it just does. The mirror, it's not given for you to fix your hair. Uh, it's for you to finally realize that you are dead. You can't save yourself. You can't be what God commands that you be on your own. But the law was never actually given to paint a picture of you. See, if you want to actually say, what does my God look like? You probably don't want to say, well, he looks like me and does exactly the things that I would do. I'm pretty sure we covered that in the first commandment. That's, that's, uh, that's idolatry. Um, the law does not paint a picture of you. It paints a picture of Christ. See, if you want to say, how can I perfectly understand what fulfilling the seventh commandment looks like? I wouldn't look at me. I would look at Jesus, who fulfilled the law perfectly. Holiness looks like Jesus. The law paints a picture of Jesus. It's a really freeing thing to understand this, that you are not measured in your faith by how well you are behaving. Holiness looks like Jesus. You don't have to worry so much about what you look like. The law shows you your sin. You, you, look, you look bad. But the gospel paints a picture of you. You are baptized. You are holy. You are worthy of love. You look like what God has made you to be, united with him in his death and his resurrection. The law paints a picture of Jesus. It shows us what Jesus looks like. The gospel paints a picture of you. This is who you really are. It doesn't mean that we reject the law or want nothing to do with the law. After all, if the law paints a picture of Jesus, well, do we reject Jesus? By no means. Do we want to hold Jesus at arm's length? Well, by no means. It's what Jesus looks like. I want to go to there. Things would be better there. Love actually looks like something, and it looks more like Jesus than it does like me, because he is the one who has perfectly fulfilled the law. They will know us by our love. That, that's what John says. Christianity is always sort of poked at because you Christians don't love your neighbor. And, well, we are we're sinners. That's, that's, a fair, that's a fair thing. It's not a good thing. It's a fair thing. They will know us by our love. But now we can actually start to talk about it as the love that is given to us, that finally lets us look away from our own appearances, our own self-righteousness to the well-being of our neighbor, the one that Jesus loves too. You are already fine in your baptism. That's the freeing thing. You're a sinner that Jesus died for. You are forgiven. You are holy. The gospel paints a picture of you. You are somebody Jesus made holy, somebody Jesus died for, somebody Jesus baptized, somebody Jesus saved. So that when you finally go back to the law and see that picture of what God's love actually does look like, well, you can see that God would actually want to see your neighbor loved and cared for too. He calls us to live inside of what he has already made us to be. Holiness. Do holy stuff. Keep the commandments. And here you'll finally understand what that word keep means. It doesn't mean obey. If I say I'm going to go jump in a pool, keep my phone for me. I don't mean listen to it and follow all of its instructions. I mean to treasure it. We treasure the law because it looks like our God. These are, these are the things that he loves. These are the things that are good. The gospel, however, paints a picture of you. You are somebody forgiven. Thanks for watching Higher Things video shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.